Yes, around June is a good afternoon if you are watching this in the afternoon because I'm recording it in the afternoon. Okay, so my name is Dr. Navi Jolali and I'm, uh, uh, I'm going to share with you something on problem statement. Uh, before that, I would like to thank uh, the coordinator, uh, FYP coordinator, and also the department for initiating this uh, very good uh, initiative because I think this is the first time that uh, we are organizing a specific lecture series eh, or for for our final year students uh, who are going to do or who are doing already their FYPs. Yeah? Because all this while, we, we normally have a very simple introduction and you are left with your respective supervisors for you to, to discuss and to conduct your experiment. Yeah, but since one of the course outcome for the FYP is actually to expose you to the actual uh, steps in, in conducting real engineering research. So the department thought it would be good if we can have short sessions like this. Uh, I don't intend this lecture to be long. Eh? It will be a short one. Don't worry. Just to, to, to share with you on, on certain important aspects of doing uh, research, particularly uh, starting with FYP, eh? FYP. So my part, I've volunteered to, to speak a bit about problem statement, yeah? Why? Because uh, I find that during the, the final presentation for FYP students, most of you will straight away jump into the methodology and the results. Even if you don't actually jump into it, you, you seem to be more focused on presenting what you got, what you found, you know, and trying to show that you are addressing some uh, the objectives, you're fulfilling the objectives, which is okay, it's okay. But doing research is more than that. And more importantly is, is, is how relevant your research is in addressing a real problem. Okay, so that is where your problem statement comes in. And in fact, uh, if you're doing a real research, you're applying for a research grant, for example, problem statement is the first thing that you must uh, develop because without that, uh, especially us in engineering, we can actually develop anything under the sun. Yeah, for any problem, actually, we can, we can develop something. But is it worthwhile doing? Eh? Is it uh, uh, a cost-effective solution? Yeah, you you know all that by defining clearly your problem statement. Okay, and that's why today I would like to share a bit about the importance of uh, problem statement. Why is it important for it to be relevant? And and some simple tips on how to write a good problem statement. Uh, and some do's and do's. And that's it. Okay, and that's it. Right, so so this uh, simple talk will be delivered fully in English, but uh, if you find that uh, I use some play words here and there, and you don't understand what I'm trying to say, you can always contact me again. Okay, and on that note, I've also prepared the notes. Can 
Because FIP is just an exposure level for you to do research. We don't expect you to do real research where you go out and find out what you say. sometime uh, discussing with your supervisor actually doctor uh, what are we trying to address eh? what problem climate change eh? which part eh? because for example climate change is a very complicated issue yeah there is no way that one research can actually solve it but obviously you can solve a certain aspect of it so be clear with your supervisor which aspect that you want to to address yeah address tau address it's not Jump straight with the solution. Solution is where you talk in the methodology section. Yeah. In the problem statement, just describe what you want to what you want to address. All right. And why is it important? Uh, because it identifies the problem. Uh, I keep on saying this again and again. If you can cannot say in your own words what is the problem, because I think you might have heard from your senior. If I'm the moderator, I always start my question is. Uh, see what you want to solve. Huh? Remember, I'm giving you some sort of virtual now. Okay, if I'm your moderator or if I'm your supervisor, this is my first go-to question. I will always ask, what exactly are you trying to solve? Huh? Uh, so if you have a clear problem statement, it might stop me from asking those questions. Okay, so, so it actually helps you for your presentation later on. All right, and then it it guides the research design and methodology. Of course, this is for real research. Lah. For FIP, actually, we actually have identified methodology already because like I said just now, uh, the time is very, very limited. For two semesters, there's no way that, you know, you can design something, design a new methodology. For those of you who are doing AI traffic might be using a new combination of models and algorithm that, that's fine huh? it's not as actually finding a new methodology you, you're comparing something that's existing and that's fine yeah but with a clear problem statement actually even for those who do who's doing ai you are exploring new things altogether yeah? because you start with a problem uh, now now that's a real research yeah? how you do it but still for fyp Problem statement is important because it helps you to 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 match the gap between what you're doing and understanding how it fits within the big scope of doing actual research. Okay, and a good problem statement will help you will help you actually to communicate the purpose. Now, in your case, might be during your viva eh, to communicate what exactly you're doing. Eh? Because I mentioned earlier, your moderator might not be, you know, very conversant, very knowledgeable about what you're doing. Because all of us at the department are actually doing different things. Uh, of course, uh, we can understand the, the basic uh, area of research that your supervisor is doing. But for what you're doing, you must explain it to us. Eh? If, if 
as to meaning uh, your moderator later on. Okay, so with the clear problem statement, it helps you to tell us what you're doing. Okay, and most importantly, we ensure the research that you're doing is relevant. Of course, uh, before we, we share the topics, we've all uh, vetted the titles and so on. Of course, everything is relevant, but what we want you to know is for you to realize that the topic is relevant as well. Why? Because uh, by doing something is relevant, it builds knowledge. And eh? because that's the purpose of doing research. Tadi ada saya dah cakap, there's no point doing research if you know what to do. There's no point doing research if you know uh, what, what you're going to get. Okay? Because research is not about uh, doing for the sake of doing. Okay? Research is about doing something so that you know something that is unknown before. Okay? But of course, during FYP, again, I'm stressing the time limitation. Uh, we normally limit the methodology to a certain uh, types where your supervisors commonly have and what kind of uh, output but a real research will will need a proper problem statement because it will build uh, the knowledge because subsequently people can build on your result to make new research so that's the idea okay and with the problem statement also that is relevant, it can increase public awareness. Okay, there's no point you're doing something, you're using research grant, tax payers money, but the public doesn't understand what you're doing and doesn't feel that it's important. Okay, that's why a good problem statement that is relevant uh, is needed because it will increase the public awareness. All right. Of course, it will help to solve the real world problems. Our world uh, is facing lots of problems, climate change, increase of, you know, uh, price of, of goods, uh, everything, eh? unemployment, uh, lowering of ringgit and so on. So if your problem statement is relevant, which, which could be used to address all these problems, then senang lah. Eh? Senang, uh, senang meaning that bukan senang nak buat, meaning that people can understand it easily and by understanding easily, you can have support, you can create more uh, awareness and create learning out of that. So, so that's why it's very important for the uh, problem statement to be relevant. And last but not least, uh, it will help you to eliminate, to decrease uh, any issues related to ethics, to, to risk, and so on, because people know that a relevant uh, research is really needed, so they will help in terms of reducing the risk and so on. Okay, other people can help uh, your research so that it will go smoothly. All right. So, how do you write a problem statement? Right. First things first, you have to define the problem. Now, this you definitely have to to get help from your supervisor. Okay, uh, from the topics list that we pro proposed this year, all of it actually relates to uh, our individual uh, areas of interest. So this one, you definitely have to talk to your supervisor. Okay, define it. And by definition, I'm not talking about according to uh, Britannica, according to Wikipedia, this, is, the problem is da 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 da. No, what we expect is simple words coming from you so that people can understand what the problem is, okay? We, you need to provide evidence of the problem. Okay, contohnya paling mudah is when you talk about climate change, lah. I'm talking about climate change because I really, weather is always on my mind. So you need to provide evidence. Uh, let's say you are developing something that can decrease uh, carbon dioxide release emission, for example. Yeah, so, so you provide evidence. Eh? According to WHO, for the past 20 years, da, 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 da. there has been an increase in gas emission, particularly from a certain industry. How much? How many kilotons? Things like that. Okay, And show preferably in units that people can relate to uh, of its uh, impact. 
you know, speed, for example. Of course, I know the, the metric unit for speed is meter per second. But for all of us, uh, meter per second doesn't mean anything, you know. Uh, we are more comfortable with, or we can gauge the speed when we talk about kilometer per hour, for example. I'm just giving you a simple example. Of course, what, what you're doing is something different. But use the units that make sense, that uh, give the impression of the heaviness of the problem. Okay, if you're talking about the weight emission of carbon dioxide, don't just say, oh, the weight is about uh, 1,000 ton. Okay, 1,000 ton or a billion ton, uh, 1,000 kilogram, a billion kilogram, you know, because it doesn't make sense. Try to compare that, for example, a million ton is like a million lorry dumping waste every minute to the ocean, uh, something like that. Uh, okay, so that you provide evidence, but also uh, I'm adding this and uh, my own uh, addition, put it in units that people can relate to, the, the impact. Okay, and next, describe the impact. Of course, describe the impact of the problem. If we don't address this, what will happen? You know, uh, the increase of carbon emission at this rate will produce something in 2050, for example. Yeah? If you don't address this by 2050, that, that, that will happen. Okay? And state the objective. So you have stated your problem, so you have defined it. So you state what you plan to do, okay? Within that problem statement or, or your objectives, doesn't matter. But if you separate it in, at different phases, it's also fine, but it must, uh, complement each other. There's no point you uh, list down your objective where it does not address what you are trying to say in the problem statement. Yeah. And and I guess this goes without saying. Uh, please keep it short and concise, lah. Yeah? Don't make it too complicated. Don't make it too complicated. Acham, you know, you're trying to solve a uh, climate change problem, which is we are addressing this very small issue of increase of carbon dioxide by da, 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 by healthcare industry, for example, yeah? And to do that, we are doing this, but before that, we know we need to do this, but before that and after that, I look. don't make it too complicated. Make it short and concise so that people can understand what you're trying to do. So I'm listing down some do's and don'ts. Actually, it's quite straightforward. As long as you're doing what, what I listed on the previous slide, it should be okay. Okay, keep it simple, define the problem, define the impact, should be okay. And one uh, tip that I find very useful is that to focus only on one specific issue. And if it's an issue that is very niche within that big scope, even better, okay? So in your presentation, don't say that my project will address climate change. But what are you doing? Oh, I recycle paper from office, ah, cannot. Huh? So people cannot relate such a big issue. Your problem, so-called problem statement is this huge and you're trying to address it by doing what? Recycle paper, how? <laughs> so, so that's why it's okay to define uh, as big as climate change, but focus it down, narrow it down to one thing that you find quite significant, eh? for example, People don't realize that actually dental uh, clinic actually contributes a certain portion of climate change. From what? Uh, you define from what sector. And from each sector, you select which one you want to address. Or actually the use of uh, disposable gloves. Because every time a patient is going to dental clinic, for example, each different uh, treatment requires different gloves. So in average, one patient who goes to a dental clinic uses five gloves, and uh, you say it like that. So my project is trying to address this very specific problem, okay? So just focus on the problem of that uh, disposable gloves, okay? So that's what I mean by focusing on one issue, right? And, and by doing that, you can specify what is impacted. So, so you mentioned just now, uh, for each patient, you, you're wasting five gloves, for example. So by addressing this, using my method, 
you're not just reducing these five clues, but actually you're doing good for the environment. I don't know. I don't know. Maybe you're developing some uh, new modern gloves with, you know, biodegradable material. I don't know. Yeah, something like that. So by focusing on one issue, you can actually specify what is infected. And by doing so, it's, it's making it easier for everyone to understand what you're doing and also to measure how far your impact will do to help solve the problem. Eh? Even though it's a small area, but if we are clear what kind of problem you're trying to solve and, and what you're doing, and we can measure that. And we can measure your performance, your quality of research based on that. And finally, avoid bias. Just because you, your technique, your methodology is proposed by your supervisor doesn't mean that you have to only focus on that one. Your literature review, your problem statement must, must guide the reader to understand the problem and show that what you're doing is actually one of the methods that uh, the research community is trying to test. Eh? So, so that's the way. Eh? Because when you're doing research, of course, you have to uh, really avoid bias. But for FYP, obviously, the methodology has already been uh, determined. So what I want is that what I, I look out for is that when you describe your problem statement, you say it in a way that uh, people have done this and this before. So our group at the Biomedical Engineering Department is trying to uh, test this new method and see whether it works or not. Yeah. So so that's how you keep your tone to be objective. You're not biased. Of course, the 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 exact opposite of the do's are the don'ts. So 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 that's what happens if you don't follow the do's and the the how just now. Okay. So never ever fail to formulate the problem. Okay. Don't just jump from climate change and straight away to collecting gloves. People don't understand. What is this? What project is this? I'm wasting my time and money listening to you. Huh? Uh, so formulate the problem, describe it properly. Uh, so show, sorry, so yeah, the session. Huh? Show that from the big scope of climate change problem, we are addressing a very narrow scope from the dental industry where the clinics are actually are not recycling their disposables properly. Uh, now, the makin narrow, makin narrow, right? And, and by doing so, you are actually helping to uh, define the clear gap because you can mention that uh, for so many years, people are not looking at, at this, uh, the wastage of these disposable gloves, and we are producing this many tons of waste every year. And it contributes to about 10% of the global carbon dioxide emission, for example. I don't know. Find out your details, your data. Okay. And that's how you, you can help to create a problems, a good problem statement. Yeah. By 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 identifying the problem, identifying the gap, and by doing so, you communicate the impact of the problem very well. Okay, by doing so, your research will be no, no issue. And by doing so also, uh, it will help your research to propose a realistic solution. Okay, there's no point in doing research, da 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 Tati, but what's the point of collecting gloves? Huh? Because what you're proposing is for everyone to collect all gloves that they do, unrealistic. The realistic is perhaps uh, 50 percent of the time. So you calculate that. You help to calculate that. Even if by collecting 50% of the gloves disposed, you can still manage to da, 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 help save the environment by this much. Eh? But you can only do that by having a good problem statement. So yeah, that's the end of my slide. Uh, I've, I've prepared a bonus for you, but you have to write, you have to read my note. So this is the QR code for downloading the note. If you can't download it from this link, I will give it to Dr. Inli. Uh, you can get it from her. And, and, and yeah, that's all from me. I wish you all the best for your FYP. Uh, don't worry if, you, if your title seems a bit 
heavy or you might look at your friends and see that your friends are going to the lab every day, you know, testing this, testing that, and your work for this semester particularly are still reading journal, lah, reading books. Lah. So don't worry about that because all of the topics has been vetted by the committee, by the department, and we have all agreed that uh, the topics all will address the course outcomes, course learning outcomes of the FYP subject. So don't worry, stop comparing yourself with others, yeah, because I've, I've assured you already that your topic, your, your content is already addressing the course outcome. Now it's only left to you to, to understand what you're trying to do. And later on, if you need to do an experiment, you do it well. And then to present and understand your results. We measure that. We don't actually measure, you know, how good or how quality your research is because that's not at your level to be compared with. Okay. At your level, what we want to see is how much you understand the FYP you're trying to do, what kind of problem you're trying to address. And when you do the experiment or you do have results or data, how much you understand of, of what you get, you know? Uh, another soalan bocor or, or some uh, advice bocor ialah in your thesis, never ever bila dapat result, you just letak saja. Without discussion. That's a clear, that's a clear no-no. Eh? Never ever do something like the above table shows my result of the experiment. Done. No, you cannot do that. Discuss it a bit, do some analysis, compare it with what others are doing, and map it to your problem statement. Ah, itu yang penting your problem statement tu kena ada, kena clear, so that your results, your discussion, can relate to the statement yang ada dalam ah uh, the early part of your thesis. Now that will make a very good thesis and work. All right. So so other than that. FYP thesis is about formatting also eh? because in doing research, you have to report that that's a, a compulsory step. Eh? There's, there's, there's no research without any reporting. Of course, you have to report and to report, you have to do certain formatting. Eh? So I thought everyone has used Word, uh, Microsoft Word before, but for doing thesis, you have to be a bit more careful and maybe learn a few things about Microsoft Word that you haven't used before. Okay, and, and that's it. That's it. So I wish you all the best for your FYP. All of your topics are relevant. It's just that how you present it will make a difference between uh, different students. Okay, so again, all the best and Assalamualaikum. Mm -hmm.